J1939 Explained, a simple intro. In this guide, we introduce the J1939 protocol basics, including PGNs and SPNs. Note, this is a practical intro, so you will also learn how J1939 data logging works and how to decode J1939 data via DBC files. Let's start with the basics of J1939. In short, SAE J1939 is a set of standards that define how ECUs communicate via the CAN bus and heavy-duty vehicles. As explained in our CAN bus intro, most vehicles today use the controller area network, CAN, for ECU communication. However, CAN bus only provides a basis for communication, like a telephone, not a language for conversation. In most heavy-duty vehicles, this language is the SAE J1939 standard defined by the Society of Automotive Engineers. In more technical terms, J1939 provides a higher layer protocol, or HLP, based on CAN as the physical layer. But what does that mean, though? In simple terms, J1939 offers a standardized method for communication across electronic control units and across manufacturers. In contrast, cars use proprietary protocols specific to each manufacturer. The implication is that even if you know how to extract the data for engine speed in an Audi A4, it will not help you extract engine speed from a Toyota Camry. On the other hand, engine speed can be extracted through the same decoding rules in practically all J1939 based heavy duty vehicles. This also means that J1939 enables various data logging use cases for aftermarket users, which we'll get into shortly. To understand the origins of J1939, let's briefly look at the history. In 1994, the first documents were released including J1939-11, J1939-21, and J1939-31. In 2000, J1939 formalized the use of CAN bus as the physical layer, and from 2001, J1939 began replacing older standards like J1708 and J1587. Today, J1939 is by far the dominant protocol in heavy-duty vehicles. In recent years, J1939 has also been adapted through J1939-22 for the next generation of CAN bus, called CAN-FD. To better understand J1939, let's look at some of the key properties of the standard. First, the J1939 baud rate is typically 250K, though more recently with support for 500K. Further, the J1939 CAN identifier is always extended 29-bit, aka CAN 2.0B. Second, most J1939 messages are broadcast on the CAN bus though some data is only available by requesting the data via the CAN bus. Third, J1939 messages are identified by 18-bit parameter group numbers, or PGNs, while J1939 signals are called suspect parameter numbers, or SPNs. Finally, multi-byte variables are sent least significant byte first, Intel byte order and PGNs with up to 1785 bytes are supported via the J1939 transport protocol. For additional properties, see our full J1939 intro article. Before we explain the more practical aspect of recording and decoding J1939 data, it's useful to understand two important concepts within J1939, namely the PGN and SPN. The J1939 PGN is an 18-bit subset of the full 29-bit CAN ID. In simple terms, the PGN serves as a unique frame identifier within the J1939 standard. This means that if you need to look up how to decode a specific J1939 frame, you will need to look up the 18-bit PGN, not the 29-bit CAN ID. Let's look at how to extract the J1939 PGN from a CAN ID. Assume you have recorded a J1939 message with the 29-bit ID 0CF00401. Here, the PGN starts at bit 9, with a length of 18 bits indexed from 1. The resulting PGN is 0F004, or in decimal form, 61444. 
If you look this up in the SAE J1939-71 documentation, you'll learn that this PGN equals the Electronic Engine Controller 1, or EEC1. Further, the document will have details on the PGN, including priority, transmission rate, and a list of associated SPNs. As evident, this particular PGN contains seven signals, or SPNs, including, for example, engine speed. Each of these signals can be looked up in the J1939-71 documentation for further details. To get a more detailed breakdown of the J1939 PGN, you can check out our online CAN-ID to PGN converter tool in the full intro article. If we look at the J1939 SPNs, these serve as identifiers for the CAN signals contained in the data bytes of each J1939 frame. SPNs are grouped by PGNs and can be described in terms of their bit start, bit length, scale, and offset, all of which is information required to extract and decode J1939 parameters to human-readable form. To understand how this works, let's assume that you have recorded a raw J1939 frame as illustrated. By extracting the J1939 PGN from the CAN ID, you identify that this is the PGN 61444 from before. Using the J1939-71 document, you learn that one of the SPNs within this PGN is engine speed, aka SPN190. Through the SPN details found in the J1939-71 document, you can extract the engine speed physical value as measured in RPM. In this example, the start bit is 24 and the bit length is 16. The engine speed signal is little Indian, and we therefore need to reorder the byte sequence from 6813 to 1368. Next, we convert the hex string to decimal and apply the standard linear conversion used in most CAN decoding. As evident, the engine speed physical value is 621 RPM. Obviously, performing this type of calculation manually is tedious. Therefore, let's try and look at how J1939 data logging is done in practice. In this example, we'll use the CanEdge CanBus data logger to record raw J1939 data from a commercial truck. To connect the CAN logger, you can most often use a J1939 Deutsch connector cable. Once connected, the CAN logger automatically starts recording all the raw CAN frames on the bus to log files on the SD card. If we extract the SD card and open one of these log files in the software tool, Assam MDF, you'll be able to see the structure of raw J1939 data. Note in particular the 29-bit CAN IDs and the data bytes. Now, to decode this raw log file, we'll use something called a CAN database, or DBC file. This is a standardized way of structuring CAN bus decoding rules like the ones used in the previous example. Specifically, for J1939, we offer a DBC file that contains decoding rules for more than 1,800 PGNs and 12,000 SPNs. Today, most CAN bus software tools, including Assam MDF, support DBC files. Because of this, we can easily decode the log file containing raw truck data using our J1939 DBC file. The result is a new file with the physical values of all SPNs that were matched by the DBC file. In this specific truck, that translates to more than 250 unique parameters including engine speed, wheel speed, fuel rates, oil temperatures, GPS positions, and much more. These parameter time series can be analyzed and visualized through tools like Assam MDF, scripts, or, for example, in dashboards. In practice, J1939 data is recorded for a number of use cases. For example, J1939 data from trucks, buses, tractors, etc. can be used in fleet management to reduce costs or improve safety. You can also stream raw or decoded J1939 ADA to a PC via USB for use in diagnosing vehicle issues in real time. Increasingly, J1939 data is also used in predictive maintenance where IoT devices record J1939 data and diagnostic trouble codes to predict issues and minimize downtime.
with the rise of low-cost J1939 data loggers, heavy-duty manufacturers are increasingly equipping assets with black boxes to record historical data to help in diagnosing intermittent issues or handling warranty disputes. To learn more about logging J1939 data, check out our separate intro and video on this. You can also find free log file samples in a demo J1939 DVC file if you want to play around with the data in the free Assam MDF tool. You can also try setting up your own J1939 dashboards. See our description for links. Finally, we also recommend checking out our other simple tutorials, including our intros to CAN bus, OBD2, CAN open, CAN FD, LIN bus, and more. If you liked this video, please share and subscribe. And if you have questions, contact us.